Hello and welcome to GUSP Conversations. I'm your host, Dhanush. And today we have a new guest for our podcast. He's a mentor come coach to senior corporate executives, a professor, a business consultant, an independent director, and a trusted family business advisor. He's also a fellow at the prestigious Institute of Coaching at Harvard. He's the founder and CEO of Step Formations, which focuses on transforming businesses and their leadership. Raman Nanda is our guest today. Raman, welcome to TUSB Conversations. Thank you, Danish. It's such a pleasure to be with you today. Thank you once again. Uh, Raman, before we, you know, we were having this conversation where this idea came that, you know, why don't you record a podcast for our listeners? Uh, you mentioned this very interesting term, design your life, right? And and when I watched your video on YouTube and I was doing my research, um, what is this? What what is this workshop about? You know, it's one of your popular ones also. And how do you help people find their spark and inspiration uh, to to lead their best lives? Tell us about this uh, design your uh, design your life workshop. Uh, thank you, Danish. Uh, I think globally, including in India, the statistics are very clear that more than seventy to eighty percent of the employees are either disengaged or highly disengaged at their workplace. In fact, twenty five thirty percent of them even hate their job. On the other side, you see that most people are working not in the area of the choice which they had when they had their education. So there's a disconnect somewhere that people work in a different area compared to what they thought they'll be working in. And when they're working, they're not really engaged at work. I'm a coach and a mentor, as you mentioned, and I find that very often there is a big gap between what people really want to do and what they are doing but they're not really able to put the hit the nail on the head as they say to figure out the right way and discover what really they can do very well in life so this is the idea which made me think about design your life workshops design your life by the way is one of the hottest selling courses at stanford and i thought i must bring this to india to our community who can learn from it, who can take advantage from it. We are all living longer lives than before. What used to be in the olden days, a 50, 60 year old lifespan is now going towards 70 to 80 and it will go even higher, which means we have many more productive years in our life. And that's what requires a bigger attention to this subject of designing your life. Anything we see around us is designed by someone, whether it's a laptop or a water bottle or a cup or a table or anything. So why not apply design principles to the most important thing, which is our life itself? So this is the inspiration which has made me bring this workshop to corporates and others. And I must tell you that it is generating a lot of interest because it's a very unique way using design principles, using design thinking to really work at figuring out what your life should be. So, you know, in, in it just like how how do you, uh, I mean, okay, let, let me ask you, you know, what are, which person should look at it? Oh, it's a, a great question. Uh, uh, if you ask me, this is a workshop which is very good for professionals. It's good for business owners. It's good for people at all ages. Like I said, people today are living much longer and productive lives. And we must use the best process for them to figure out what's good for them. But I think one of the highest impacts it can have is for professionals who are working in the corporate sector, but they are not really engaged. There is something missing. There is often a square peg in a round hole and design your life is a really unique and creative way to figure out how to make it better. Yeah, uh, Raman, tell me something has in your past that you must have interacted with a lot of people. Um, any incident which you remember where somebody uh, came up to you was struggling with with his or her own career and then um, you guided them using the principles in your workshop of design your life. Can you share a story like that with us? Yeah, there are there are many uh, uh, such cases where people uh, have, for example, followed 
what their parents told them is good for them you know and hmm. started working or uh, taking up say, engineering or medical and then 10 20 years down the line i have met some of these professionals who maybe for example i know a very senior person working in the finance space but he was considering himself a misfit you know it was a chore for him to get up every day and go to work and when we explored together as to what were his values what was driving him what was his view about life and about work it turned out that working in hr and coaching people is something which would really inspire him so finance and hr typically we say require very different skills but here was a very senior person successful in finance earning a good sum of money as such doing well from the company's point of view but not still satisfied internally so this is something which happened thanks to his reflecting on what activities engage him what are his values and following the the yeah. the methodology of the workshop yeah yeah but, but you know, my my question to you was that you know what are the few things which you told him that okay the, do this 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 you know one two three four yeah uh, and that actually narrowed him down from <laughs> shifting his career mm-hmm. so uh, the process of design thinking uh, is a five step process which is uh, starting with empathizing starting with uh, next is defining ideating prototyping and testing which is you first define what the issue is based on your understanding of the self and in the understanding of the self which is the empathizing part you try to figure out your values you keep a journal of the activities where you are fully engaged you are in a flow state with these two inputs then you look hmm. at ideating and seeing what are the different things that you could possibly do while being in the same company while being in the same organization and then you prototype them which means you take small baby steps to figure out if that works out for you or not with some conversations or some experiences and then only take a decision to do that on a big scale uh, th- th- i think now that that's a good point which you've raised out here um and how do you facilitate a workshop like this you know how many people can attend a workshop like this um is it easy for you to interact with all of them or is you know what's the entire process yeah. mm-hmm. which you go through it yeah so this is normally uh, an 8 hour workshop if you know people can find out the time for this because this is such an important subject i normally have a colleague with me so two of us uh, would facilitate uh, this workshop uh, which would have some amount of pre work required for the people to reflect before they come into the workshop and then during the workshop we would have a series of activities starting with your defining your values looking at the things which excite you and things which you don't like doing brainstorming with yourself making mind maps and eventually coming out with narrowed down possibilities of what you could potentially do try to do a prototype of them and then of course beyond the workshop you need to continue some work to see that the prototyping gives you good results and then you pick up one of those choices mm. as the option mm. to go forward so typically mm. an 8 hour workshop uh, with two of us facilitating that for about 30 people that's a uh, that's a good number where we yeah. can give personal attention yeah but and raman you know if you can you know because 8 hour is a you know full day um you know brainstorming session which is going on can you share an activity which which you do with the with the audience oh yeah uh, actually the audience is uh, just to begin with in the workshop we start with a creative exercise to open the right side of the brain so i would ask the audience for example to draw out something and take you know 5 10 15 minutes for that again to activate the right side of the brain as i mentioned and then mm. we would have them in groups of say 3 to 4 or 5 on each table where they are working out on their respective areas but also having a dialogue with those on the table so that they can keep you know reflecting of 
what they are doing with people on the table and the facilitators would move from table to table to ensure that it is following the process and we are getting ready for the next step and some of the steps i mentioned already in the answer mm. to your earlier question mm-hmm. And any challenges have you faced? Well, I mean, uh, the, the usual challenge which somebody is facing, right? You're doing a workshop. You're like, oh, okay, but this this audience is not reciprocating to to the way I I usually function, right? How do you handle a situation like that? So you know, uh, Danish, this is a great question. But uh, eventually, we like to invite people to the workshop who are serious about looking and reflecting at their own life and seeing, you know, what they really want to do. Now, mm-hmm. if uh, if somebody is not open to change if somebody is not willing to really participate in the process like mm. i said it means writing your work view writing your life view where you like to write you have to write on what is work as far as you are concerned are you doing it to earn money are you doing it to make an impact are you doing it to express yourself and similarly in life what is it that you're looking for uh, to some extent the why of your life so work and all the other things put together is the life view so the hmm. challenge comes if we are not uh, willing to or able to reflect and you know bring at least 50 60% clarity to these issues uh, that's required to move forward to the next step of choosing what you want to do but is it sustainable right i mean at one point obviously because you you're spending 8 hours and then you feel like okay you know i've given a lot but as next day comes the second day comes the third day comes and you feel you know let me be what i used yeah. to be right yeah yeah so uh, so this is again a very good question i'll say because our life is typically about 700000 hours 7 lakh hours so if you are living about 80 years that's the number of hours now 8 hours if you're spending on designing your life it's a very small investment you are mm. making to make sure that you're on the right track that's one second as part of the process we create a community from these 30 people of people who want to follow this together where they become a self supporting community going forward and they keep the confidentiality of uh, the people who are in that smaller cohort and that becomes a very effective way to ensure that you don't forget after the 8 hours are over oh, i see and and do people come back and share experiences that you know oh, i attended an ex, you know workshop and this is what i feel now does that I'll happen t- often yeah i'll tell you a very interesting example you know uh, yeah. there was uh, a couple who had come to attend two workshops uh, separate workshops because we don't like uh, uh, two family members to attend the same workshop uh, yeah. so they attended two parallel workshops and it turned out that for both of them one of the options going forward was to relocate to a different geography and do something very different there which would give an exposure to their children and to themselves to a different kind of learning and you know what the two of them separately came to the same conclusion that that's what we want to do and 6 months later when i called up they were both relocated in the new geography so this is a very powerful concept where you are really going into basics you are going into design thinking which is really based on sound principles which help you do what you want to do okay so over here people we talking about corporate spark you know in your introduction mm-hmm. i mentioned that you yes. also work with family businesses mm-hmm. now that's a separate different separate challenge these guys face Mm-hmm. what do you what do you have for them so i think uh, typically for family business owners we create a workshop where the let's say 25 30 of them would be together and as i said on each table we would ensure there's only one person from a particular family so that they are a little more open and they don't you know feel somebody watching over their shoulder but again the principles are the same because in families often the head of the family decides what the rest of the people are going to do and that could be something that they want to do or not want to do and they don't normally have a chance to question the head of the family or to change their portfolio i think this exercise makes everyone open up so that as a family as a team they can look at whether they have all the skills required to run the business 
and what is really each of the members wanting to do again a very powerful tool for business families right A- any incident where you remember that you know uh, the two people i mean and you were not aware of it that two people was from the same family were sitting on the same table to light to the note what did you do <laughs> so so uh, danish it it happened once because the surnames were different so i thought huh. they are from different families but they turned out to be uh, from the same family but yeah. uh, you know uh, they were participating with full enthusiasm and not holding back so you know i i let it pass because eventually you know uh, the rules are meant to ensure a good success to the workshop and not for the sake of the rules themselves you know so i let it pass but uh, i had to become more careful for the subsequent workshops to ensure that even the family name is different they could be from the same family Oh, that that's a learning in itself. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah, it yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. My final question. You know, what's the one idea or spark that you'd like to leave for our listeners? I would like to tell your listeners that, you know, the best doable option is better than the best theoretical option. We are often thinking that you know, ideally, I should be doing this. That could be the best theoretical option. but you also need to temper your idealism with reality to see what your business needs what your company needs what the function needs so i always say that the best doable option is better than the best theoretical option because you can implement the first one and if i am allowed to give one more uh, idea for my listeners i would hmm. like to tell them that money and meaning need not be mutually exclusive you can get money from the same job and meaning from the same job provided you do the thinking on a design thinking basis and figure out where is it you can get both of these so never think that they are mutually exclusive many times we are trained to think like that that if i am making money then i have to forget making meaning in my life no both can be achieved so these are the messages for your listeners i hope they like them Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Raman, on that thank, uh, on that note, thank you very much for taking out the time and uh, being part of the TOSB conversations. And listeners, this was uh, Raman Nanda talking about design your life. And for more information, you can obviously get in touch with us, and we'll be happy to take the conversation forward. And if you have any questions, you can uh, wherever you're listening your podcast, write the question, and we'll get it answered for you. Raman, thank you very much once again. Thank you, Danish. Thank you so much. Enjoyed.